Hey, it's Randy from UC Status. Today I'm going to show you the latest update, hot off the press, uh, for Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows. It's 4.16. So what exactly has changed? Well, kind of everything. Uh, it's not just a new user interface, it's actually a new application. Uh, Microsoft has completely rewritten the Teams Rooms on Windows application from the ground up but it is completely different. It looks more like the Android story than uh, what we previously saw on the Windows MTR update. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, besides the, the look and feel, so on the left here is the touch panel, on the right is the front of room display, of course, with my signature uh, lightsaber. Those that are eagle-eyed will notice that my lightsaber hilt is on the other side of the screen, and that's thanks to this here, which is the uh, the calendar box. So it's the same calendar box you get on the on the uh, touch console as the front of room display, but these are all of the upcoming meetings. So something that uh, people have been asking for for quite a long time is actually the ability to see on the front room display, the meetings that are upcoming, uh, rather than having to go to the table, find where the tap console is, maybe it's facing the wrong direction, maybe it's in the center of a big table, uh, what have you. Hopefully there's a scheduling panel, maybe a Teams panel on the outside of the door, but if there isn't, then you can walk inside the room and quickly and easily see at a glance that you've got some meetings upcoming and maybe you're in the right room, etc. Uh, people that don't like this, incidentally, uh, Microsoft has given you the ability, with the XML of course, to turn this off. So you can, if you want to, actually m remove the calendar box uh, completely from the front room display. Not sure why you would. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for it, but uh, 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 and of course, uh, they've delivered that. So the first thing, it's moved from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen. So this kind of more resembles, I guess, the Teams panel interface, where you got the calendar on the right, and then you've got like an app tray or something on the left. So the calendar box, no different if I wanted to go and join this meeting, I could just press join and it takes me straight in. So now I'm in the meeting, you can see I'm over here with my green screen and everything, my breakfast plate. So I'm just gonna turn off the camera. Now while we're here, I'll actually take you through this interface of actually being in a meeting. So the first thing is a subtle thing you may not have noticed actually, the microphone used to have a little drop down list or a little drop down arrow next to it, a little like this. So this is the camera where I've actually got multiple cameras plugged into the system. Uh, they've actually had uh, a drop down list here to get you at the uh, noise canceling. So what you have to do is go into the three dots, go into audio settings, and that brings up the noise suppression tick box. So a little change, but I think it's a really good one. I always thought it was a strange place to have it on the on the mute button to actually configure audio settings and accidentally turn off audio suppression, uh, that sort of thing. Of course, you got the camera icon. You can turn off and on the camera. You can go ahead and choose between your cameras uh, in the same way as you could before, volume is no different. Um, if this wasn't the, uh, this way before, you got the raised hand front and center, it means you can quickly and easily get out the raised hand button. Um, if you wanna get additional reactions, you have to open up the reactions and choose one there. Of course, this tells you that you're encrypted. If you've got end-to-end uh, -end encryption turned on, it will actually display there your encryption key and that sort of thing. Of course, you've got, still got Cortana. If that is, of course, enabled on your system, you can see it is actually enabled on mine. I'm just gonna cancel that. Now, where it starts to get really interesting, so obviously we open this up, you've got live captions, you've got uh, PTZ control, so if you've got uh, somebody doing remote PTZ control using their uh, the Teams app, then you can turn that off if you want to. Uh, chat bubbles, so that's a new thing in Teams rooms where if somebody is actually chatting, you'll actually see the bubbles uh, as they start to appear, uh, kind of floating down from the top. Quite cool, it means you can kind of follow along with uh, little bits of chat. When the chat starts to get really noisy though, there's other options for that. Of course, you can turn off incoming video, turn off room remote, uh, again, get at those audio settings, and then from here you can actually report a problem. And then where it starts to get very, very interesting, and this is a complete departure to the way they used to do it before, is layouts. The layouts is in the same place, but it actually pops up a new menu box uh, that actually 
um, allows you to configure the different layouts. So you'll notice the first thing is, is in gallery and also large gallery in together mode, if I had enough people in this meeting, you have the ability to show chat. So I can actually just go into each of these layouts and then configure uh, and actually show the chat pane. So if I just click on that, you can see that the chat pane pops in from the right. So quite cool. So I can go into each layout and I can choose whether I want to show the chat pane at any given time. So I'm just going to toggle that off. Then the other one is front row. So front row used to just be an on or off, but now you can actually configure what you see. By default, because this isn't a 16 by 9 screen, this, um, it's going to default to the to, to the content stage there, the gallery down the bottom, and of course that uh, chat pane on the right. What you used to have to do if I wanted to show the um, the raised hand pane over on the left, I would have to go into the XML or I'd actually have to have a 16 by 9 display. If I want to, I can go ahead and hit the drop down list and choose to show the raised hands on the left. But what's more than that, you can see I can choose to have the chat on the left and the raised hands on the right, for instance, or the chat on the left and nothing on the right. Um, so you can actually customize um, your view of front row um, while you're actually in the meeting. So I'm just gonna pop up the raised hands thing. And as I said, if I come out of here and I do raised hands, you can see, there you go. I've got my hand raised and it's showing there. Then I've got content there. Then if I'm gonna bring any content in, you know, in the room, I can go to the share tray, click that. And then you can see I've got the option for HDMI. So I'm not plugged into a laptop, so uh, I'm not gonna be able to uh, uh, plug in HDMI. But of course, I've got the ability to start a whiteboard. This was available kind of December time, 4.15 something. Um, but if I wanted to bring up a whiteboard, I can just click on whiteboard and then press share. And that brings the Microsoft whiteboard into the content stage. There you go. So that's a whiteboard. This is a recurring meeting. So this is the whiteboard that has uh, persisted over time. Now, if I want to just go and press join, for instance, on another device there, there you go. So that's another device up there that's actually um, bringing me into this meeting. You can see um, they've popped down into the gallery. So I just wanted to show you having another attendee in the in the meeting. What I can do is I can click on an attendee, and I've got choices for pinning them, spotlighting them, make him attendee, that sort of thing. If I choose pin for me, that just pins them, puts a little pin there. I can actually just remove the pin quickly um, from the touchscreen uh, side of things there. All right, so I'm just going to come out of this meeting. That's kind of what it's like to be in a meeting in the new interface. Right, so the other things that have changed, of course, we know that Cortana has been promoted and kind of moved down to the bottom left, which is great. It means that it's always in a familiar location. It means that you can always easily get at it. We still have the meet now button. So this just starts an instant meeting. I've got the call button, which brings up the uh, type of name. Of course, there I can just type a name. I can go ahead and you know, type in a phone number if, if I want to, and that will bring up the actual list of users. I've got a share button. So the share button actually just comes up with two choices. I've got the, the ability to cast and I've got uh, the HDMI ingest. And it puts that uh, information on not only the touch console, but the front of room display for everybody to see. The other thing is invite this room. So um, if you remember the older interface, uh, the join the meeting and the invite this room were actually hidden under the more button. So re previously, all you had was the meet, a dial pad, um, sort of call and share, I think, is the, the main buttons on the front of room display. And then everything else was hidden under more. So if I go in into in invite this room, so for the first time ever, Microsoft has actually put some, some I guess, friendly instructions on the touch console. Um, so, you know, if you want to invite this room, what you can do is, you know, on your laptop in the Teams uh, application, you can choose room audio and actually join in and add a nearby room. So this is a bit more of a user friendly option to, to tell people how to use this uh, actually quite hidden feature. And then of course, the other thing that's been moved out of more is the join with a meeting ID. So the interface is no different. I still have the option to choose 
Zoom or Teams, and I can type in the meeting ID and passcode, and I can quickly go ahead and join that meeting. And of course, more has got some love. So if I go into more, I've got the ability to to go accessibility. So you know, previously there was just a kind of a flyout menu that would fly in from the right, and all those things were a list. Now there's kind of bigger, bolder buttons. So if I go into accessibility, I've got the option to you know choose high contrast or uh, enable the narrator. I can uh, report a problem. I can restart the device, and I can go into settings there. The other option I've got is actually the ability to turn on and off the Cortana wake word uh, thing. Um, and of course, I can choose the volume, etc. If I go into there, I've got the option to give feedback. So that's just giving feedback for what's going on in the room. And of course, I can um, uh, report a problem. So giving feedback is something you give to Microsoft of, you know, do you like it? Do you not? That sort of thing. Uh, a report a problem is more of an um, an IT function, as it were. For the next meeting that's in the calendar, I can actually open up uh, and actually see the meeting details. I can see the scheduled name, the time, um, um, and and date. Uh, I can see that it's a Zoom meeting. I don't need the meeting subject to say Zoom in order to show me this is a Zoom meeting. It is actually a Zoom meeting, and I can see the organizer. If I wanted to, I can press join to join early, but I'm not going to do that. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Microsoft Teams Zoom is on Windows 4.16, brand new user interface, brand new Teams app. I think Microsoft has done a great job with this new interface, uh, bringing you know these commonly used features outside of more and promoting it. I can see this list growing. I always thought that Microsoft had a lot of wasted space in trying to keep it clean by putting all of these commonly used features under more. It actually hid their usefulness. You know, things like putting the share button inside of more. I thought was was an awful choice. You know, and you know bringing this one to the front of room. Um, you know, in that same line, while hiding something that you're going to use every day inside the more box was, uh, was a big mistake. It's great to see that they've moved this down here, they still think it's important. It is important for accessibility, and those sort of things. I could just say, hey, join my meeting, and it will bring me into that meeting. So it's a great thing. But hiding useful features under more was always a mistake. So bringing them front and center, I think, is a great thing. So the other thing to say, and I put this in my blog post, is that you don't have to have this um, Teams app or user interface on right now. You actually have a choice. It's disabled by default. So once 4.16 comes to your um, Teams room, that will actually install the second app. You actually have to use an XML file to show that new interface. By enabling that new interface, basically it de demotes and kind of stops the old Teams app and, and uh, promotes the, the new Teams app. However Microsoft is doing it, you'll need the XML to choose whether you want to see the old one or the new one. And that's it. I hope it's been useful. Catch you in the next video.